your television goes dark and so does the rest of your apartment. Unable to concentrate on anything else apart from what will happen next in the movie you were busy watching, you go on your phone in a desperate attempt to finish the movie on a streaming app. To your shock, you realize there's no Wi-Fi and cell phone signal. You stand up and flick the light switch. Nothing. You decide now is a good time to go grab something to eat. The streets are dark, but the lights from the cars help at least. Some of the smaller shops are operating with candlelight, but their card facilities are offline. You need cash. The reality of your situation kicks in when you go to the ATM only to realize that it's offline. You barely have cash. Your card doesn't help at all and the food in the back of your fridge can't be trusted to satisfy your growing hunger. What do you do? What would happen if the power suddenly disappeared and didn't return? If you think this is an unrealistic scenario, you haven't heard about the black sky hazard. Yes, there is an actual term for this terrifying yet realistic scenario. This is Mystify and this is what would happen if the Earth suddenly loses all power. So, let's go back to you standing in the street without money, a useless credit card and a growing stomach. There are others just like you, but some might not be as lower abiding as you. Day 1 to 3 The first couple of hours will remain relatively peaceful as citizens remain hopeful that the power will return. With the majority of people being cut off from news feed, rumors will rise and panic will set in. First, as we had recently seen when the COVID pandemic appeared on the horizon, is panic buying. But what separates the COVID pandemic panic buying from this is that most stores will be offline and unable to transact. Those that are able to stay in business during the mayhem will only take cash. The cashless masses of people will become desperate and resort to their next available option, looting. A familiar symptom of most disruptive disasters is looting. Panicking masses would flood the shops and distribution centers and stock up on essentials such as food, water, and of course, toilet paper and big screen televisions. A vast fraction of the population will remain behind locked doors in the hope of normality returning soon. But they, too, will become desperate and irrational as time goes by. Day 3 to 5 As the outage continues, the supermarkets will run empty, either because of panic buying or looting. Some will be restocked, but not for long. The power outage will disrupt the entire supply chain. Offline management systems will be the Achilles heel of the supply chain, but there would also be other issues such as fuel shortages and more straightforward matters such as directions. With no satellites or cellular triangulation, people will simply not know where to go anymore. Lost trucks that became stranded due to the shortage of fuel and inability to navigate would become sitting docks for looters. The reservoirs run dry and there is no way of pumping water without electricity. But before you notice that there's no more coming from the taps, you would have smelled another problem on the rise. Inadequate sanitation. Sewage plants can't operate without power and this will lead to the entire system backing up and spewing its repulsive contents through manholes onto the streets. Probably around day 5 or 6, when their water stocks are depleted at home, hordes will flock to public fountains and lakes to scoop up water for home consumption. Just as in the wild, these watering holes will become cesspools of violence as people fight to get hold of the last remaining portable water in the big cities. Day 5 to 10 Small shops, supermarkets and malls are empty by now and some are burned to the ground. The shops that still traded in cash become targets for the angry cashless mobs. Even those with their own security can't keep the hungry hearts at bay. Without being able to communicate effectively, the police and other government security forces are spread thin and unable to coordinate proper defense strategies. Without shops and supermarkets, those that still have cash would need to buy necessities from other people. Expect to pay nothing less than $50 for a gallon of fresh bottled water from your neighbor. Those who do not have cash would need to start barter trading with what they have. With a dramatic lack of law enforcement, these life or death deals will become violent eventually and those that do not get what they need will become more daring and dangerous. Day 10 and on The truly desperate or greedy would start looting homes in an attempt to collect cash, food, water or any valuable they could use to batter. 
This will lead to violent fights breaking out, more than what the military that was deployed to mitigate the chaos can handle. Eventually, factions will form, small gangs of armed people that will clash with the scattered military and police, and they will continue to raid the homes of those unable to protect themselves. With a lack of fuel, water, electricity and communication, the streets will start to reek of overflowing sewage and decaying bodies, while uncontrollable fires rage in certain parts, accompanied by violent gang activities. Eventually, you will have a world similar to what you have seen in apocalyptic zombie movies, minus the zombies, of course. Interestingly, the probability of such a global catastrophe occurring is minuscule. So, for now, you can continue watching more of our videos while you still have power. Before we go, we would love to know what you would do during such an event. Would you join one of the gangs or would you try to hide and wait it out? Please comment in the section below. Thanks so much for watching this video. We hope to see you next time on Mystify.